2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. Look at what it says. But also for this very reason. Now that very reason, when you read 2 Peter, he's actually talking about in the previous chapter, our precious salvation. And the precious promises that we've been given. And because we've been given this precious promises and we've been given our salvation. It says in 2 Peter, for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Now it's important that we understand that the starting point of our salvation is faith. Okay? The starting point of your salvation is not good works. Okay? Okay? Because the reality is, is that when you come to Christ, we come to Christ as sinners. It says in the Bible that Jesus died for our sin, even while Christ Jesus died for us and saved us and loved us, while we were still sinners, yet he died for us, Romans 5, 8. And so we need to understand that when we come to the Lord, the very first thing is by faith. It's all by faith, okay? And it starts by faith. You know, we don't just just get delivered from our darkness, but we get delivered from our disbelief. And as we choose to believe, so it all starts by faith. But now Peter is talking about something that he wants to add to our faith. Amen? It's like this. Have you ever wanted to add something to your cheeseburger? Now I'm talking to the guys, huh? Maybe if you wanted to add, let me add some this or add some that, some bacon. Amen? You want to add something that makes it good. So now he's telling us to add to our faith. And we want to add to our faith so that we can grow. Amen. So it starts with faith, but we want to grow. Can you imagine if I had a 17-year-old kid that was still in diapers? Can you imagine if I had a 17-year-old kid that was still in diapers, that lived at home, that sucked on a pacifier? Wouldn't there be something wrong with that? Yeah. Right? But sometimes it's like that in the church because we have people that have been serving God or been a Christian and they started their faith, but they never grew. They never grew up. And I want to help you so that you could grow because the Bible encourages us to grow in our faith so that we can grow up. So look at your neighbor and tell them, grow up. Grow up. Right? And so you're going to add to your faith some virtue. What's virtue? It means moral excellence. It means goodness. It means righteousness. So you're going to add to your faith goodness and righteousness. You're going to add to virtue. Then you're going to add some knowledge. Amen? So that you understand what the Bible says, that you understand right from wrong, that you have a knowledge of of what God's plan is and His will for you in your life, that you are not ignorant to the things of the devil, how he comes against you, that you add to your faith knowledge and to knowledge self-control. How many guys need some self-control? You know, have you ever have you ever seen anybody have adult temper tantrums? You know, have you ever had a temper tantrum as an adult? I haven't. None of us. I I think it was about I think it was about three weeks ago. I was so frustrated because I got my hair cut. I paid twenty five dollars. I got my hair cut. And I cut my own hair, and then I went and cut my own hair because I didn't like the way that the lady cut it. And I was so mad. I took my comb and I threw it at my mirror. And my wife said, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. I was having an adult tantrum, you know? Ah, uh, right? But we need to practice that self-control. Because self-control comes from the Lord. The ability to be able to govern yourself so that you don't give in to these impulses. And you don't give in to this sinful nature so that you can add to your faith some self-control. Amen? Look at your neighbor. Tell him, you need some self-control. <laughs> add to your faith not only self-control, perseverance. Say with me, perseverance. Perseverance. And we're going to talk about that this morning, and I'm going to keep reading, but we're going to hone in and focus on perseverance because that's what I want to talk about this morning, to help you persevere and encourage you to keep walking with the Lord. But let's keep reading. It says, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. But listen, let the warning that that Peter, the apostle, shares with the church. For if these things are yours and abound, well, it's not a warning, but it's a blessing, then you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Think about it. You could be, there's a lot of Christians and they are barren and they are unfruitful. And he says, if we add these things to our faith, 
that we start producing fruit and that we're not barren. Because the reality is, is that when you have a tree, pretend it's an orange tree, that tree needs to produce fruit, right? And so the reality is for us in our Christian walk, we want to have fruit. We want to not be barren to produce fruit. And what's the fruit? The fruit is the things that he's talking about to your faith. So you add to your faith virtue and knowledge and self-control and godliness and brotherly kindness. It's all these things that are added to your faith. So you got some fruit because maybe someone can pick some fruit next to you. I got some brotherly kindness for you. Amen. I got some self-control for you. Amen. I got some knowledge for you so that we can be blessed. Okay. But I want to talk to you this morning about persevering. Okay. When I think about persevering. I think about those Rocky movies, you know. I was going to do the Rocky theme song. Remember him? He would always persevere. Rocky never gave up, you know. But let me ask you a question this morning. Sorry. What does perseverance mean? What does that mean? Just to you guys. Why don't you guys give me some feedback? Endurance. Like enduring. Like Enduring? What does it mean to persevere? Stay steadfast. Stay steadfast? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he cheated. Yeah. <laughs> What does it mean to persevere, right? Because we need this quality and we need this character. Listen, to perseverance, look at what it means. Let me give you a definition. In Greek, it means upamuno or something like that, which I totally butchered. But it means steadfastness. What does steadfast means that you're not going to change your mind. It means that you're unmovable, that you're unshakable. It means that circumstances and situations do not change you. And the person that you are. It means consistency. How many guys know being consistent? Right? Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I don't want to pray because I'm tired. I've been getting up earlier, setting my alarm for a half an hour earlier than I have to get up. Because I was struggling with praying in the morning. And finally I'm just saying I've got to lose sleep because I want to pray. And you know what? Being consistent with that. Waking up every day on Saturday. I'm still going to pray. On Sunday I'm going to pray. Being consistent. Right? It means to persevere. It means endurance, like my mom said. It means waiting. To persevere is actually to wait. It means patience. How many guys know that patience has to do with long-suffering? The patience. My mom used to say, we need the patience of Job in this house. Grew up with two two boys, you know? And we were kind of wild, me and my brother, you know? Me and my brother, we used to do this thing where we we would go, uh, as long as we can, purposely in the back seat to just get my dad. And my dad says, hey, you want me to pull over the car whenever we're driving long ways? So my brother goes, uh, we just do this on purpose. <laughs> my mom is saying, you need the patience of Job in this house. You know? But we need patience. Right? And that, that word patience means in persistent and in, in, in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving the success. That's what it means to persevere. It means that you're persistent in doing it despite the difficulties. Despite the difficulties that may happen. You say, well, why is this message for you? Because it's for me. See, I'm persevering. I'm not giving up. I thank the Lord that you're here. I need this to persevere. You need this to persevere. You need to have this quality in your life despite the difficulties, despite the opposition that's going to come your way or delay in achieving success like Sean is going on another interview. Blessing that he's going on interviews, but I understand he's persevering. He's not giving up. You know, okay? We need this quality as a Christian. To persevere, you're going to need it. Amen? Galatians 6, 9. Look at what it says. Let's read it together. And let us not grow weary while doing good. I'm tired of doing this. I'm tired of doing this stuff. I'm tired of having no success. I'm tired of not having results. Well, the Bible says... Don't go weary while doing good. Other words, don't get tired of doing the right thing. Don't give up. You persevere. And you say, why? For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. See, there's going to be a season, beloved, that you are going to reap. There's going to be a season that we're going to see the blessing that's going to come by not giving up, by you holding on, by you trusting in the Lord. There's going to be a season that will come if you do not lose heart. And when you think about seasons, how many seasons are there? Right? Let's think about it. How many is there? There's winter. Right? That's kind of a hard season. 
Right, right now, you know, we're, we're like shorts and t-shirts. How many of you guys putting your Facebook posts on people that are living in the Midwest where there's like a nuclear, you know, frozen, everybody is like one degrees outside. I seen on the news, the lady's all, she was all bundled up. I felt bad for her even to go out. She's all, it hurts when I walk outside. I'm like, get inside then, put that news people down, you know, <laughs> the lady inside, what's wrong with you? You know, but it's freezing, right? And it's a cold winter, but you know, we, we got it so good right now. But the reality is, is that winters can become very harsh and winters can become difficult. And sometimes, you know, we become in those seasons in our life where it's like, man, I feel like it's winter. I feel like it's harsh. I feel like it's difficult. But the reality is, is that there's going to be another season that's going to come if you do not lose heart. Because after winter, then there is what? Spring. There's spring. I love spring. Right? And then spring comes. And spring is such a blessing, right? Because all the flowers begin to bud. Because all the newness of life begins to come. And you know, the reality is, is that God wants to do something in our lives and make us brand new because the newness of life. He wants to do something new. But if you don't hang in there, if you give up during the winter season, you will never see the spring. Do you understand? So do not grow weary while doing good for in due season you're going to reap if you don't lose heart. Amen? Look at 1 James 5, 7. You guys with me? Therefore, be patient. Say, what kind of patience are we? So we're talking about microwave patience. You got to sit in front of the microwave. For, or you're talking about the drive through How many of us go through the drive through and you're like, dang, I'm better off going inside. Like, what is going on with this drive through you know? Man, we live in a society where everything's instant. One time I went to McDonald's. I kid you not. I went to McDonald's. I ordered a cheeseburger and I paid my money. In 30 seconds, I came up and they gave me the burger. And I thought, this is just wrong. <laughs> That's just crazy. But we live in this instant society where we want instant gratification. But the Bible tells us to be patient. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Okay? Be patient for the Lord to come back. Say, well, what am I, what are you doing today? Well, I don't know. I'm waiting for Jesus to come back. <laughs> I'm waiting for him to come back. Look at what he says. He gives the illustrations of a farmer. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. So the farmer, right? What does the farmer do? The farmer has a seed. Okay. And you guys are planting seeds. You are farmers. We are all farmers. This ministry is seed. The word of God is seed. You are planting seed in your life. So the farmer takes the seed and they plant it in the ground. And then what do they do? Even before that, they have to till the ground and make sure that the ground is even ready to even receive the seed. And then when the seed is actually received, then what does he do? He waters it. He takes care of it. He nourishes it and he waits. So some of you have some seeds, some seeds of faith, some things that you've been praying for, some seeds of faith that you're holding on to the Lord, waiting for the Lord. And you hold on and you plant those seeds and you wait, just like the farmer, and you take care of it. And eventually, you receive that harvest. He says this, you also be patient. Look at your neighbor and tell him, be patient. Be patient. Establish your hearts. You know what establish means? Establish is a very close to the same word as persevere. Okay, and that's our word for today, by the way. When I say that, I want Andy to scream. No, I'm kidding. Oh we, I'm kidding. That's an old show back in the day. You have the word for the day. Remember that show? Yeah, that was, <laughs> I don't know whatever happened to Pee Wee, but we pray for Pee Wee, you know? Whoa. But it was, uh, you know, the, every time they had the word for our word for today is perseverance. Ah. So. <laughs> 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 so establish your heart. What does that mean to establish? You know, that's what it means to be established means that you don't move. Establish your hearts, establish your life, establish your relationships, establish your family, establish your home, establish everything, establish your hearts while you're waiting for God. I'm getting established right now. So that I become unmovable because I can endure even in the winter seasons because I've been established. It's important. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. What does that mean? That means that in a twinkling of an eye, we will be caught up with the Lord in the air. And Jesus is coming back. 
I know it may not seem like it, but let me tell you, life is so fragile. Do you know that one time I was on the freeway and I seen like a five car collision. And the first car, and I actually was able to avoid it because I was like the last one. The first car was going about 70 miles an hour, went to a dead stop, slammed on its brakes, and the whole car spud out of control. Let me tell you how quick in a moment your life can change forever and how you will meet eternity and you will stand before the living God very quickly. So you hold on, beloved, and you wait for the coming of the Lord or for the Lord to take you, one of the two. Because when you look back at your life, trust me, life is really short. We're all getting older. I don't know how me and Andy got old. Me and Andy used to be in the seventh grade, PE class, hanging out together. What happened, Andy? How do we become so old? You know? But you know what? Praise God that God restores our youth. So look at what Romans 5.1 says. Look at what it says. You guys with me? Therefore, having been justified by what? What does it say? Faith. By faith. Now that's important because that is a doctrine and that is a teaching that we need to hold on to. Your justification, and that word justification means that your right standing with God is by faith. It's by faith in Jesus Christ. Okay? Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Isn't that awesome? I mean, you know, sometimes people wait until the last minute. Okay, I'm going to make my peace with God. But we don't, we have peace with God like every day. Like God's our heavenly father. Like we could talk to him. Like he loves us. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have enmity towards God. The wrath of God is not over us. Because we've been saved from the wrath of God in the presence of God. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into the grace in which we stand. So we have access, right? And where's the access to the throne of God? And it's by faith to which the grace in which we stand. Amen? So when we stand and we stand in this access, it's by faith and it's by grace. Say grace. Grace. We stand by this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And so now we rejoice because we have hope. The Bible says at one time we were people who didn't have hope. But now we have hope and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Oh man, we can wake up and rejoice in the hope of God's glory. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations okay what does that word glory mean it means the magnificent or great beauty it means to rejoice so you glory in your tribulations do you know that isn't that amazing so as you go through tribulations then it says in the bible that we also glory in tribulations that word tribulation has to do with oppressing has to do with pressure has to be with pressing together, experiencing pressure. It also has to do with the oppression or affliction or tribulation or distress. So you glory through your tribulations. You glory through your stress. You glory through your oppressions. All these things. Right? So this is what the Bible says. And this is why you glory. Knowing that tribulation, which is a, 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 a cause of great trouble or suffering produces what does it say that it produces perseverance. that's the word for today <laughs> perseverance so you say that this tribulation this trouble this anguish this difficulty in my life actually produced something inside of me that i needed in order to keep walking with god and that's why you glory in your tribulations and you glory in your tribulations because you know that God is producing something inside of you. And I heard someone say that God cares more about your character and more about the person inside of you than you just getting everything that you want. Because he is building his character inside of you. He's using these circumstances that are difficult and these situations that are causing pressure in your life for you to develop this quality that you desperately need perseverance. You need to be able to persevere. You need to be able to overcome. 
You need to be able to stand in the midst of trials. You need to learn to be steadfast even when it gets hard and it gets difficult. That's what it means to be a Christian. To hold on to your faith. Amen? Amen. And so, perseverance and perseverance builds what? It builds character. Right? So your character is being built right now. You say, well, how come I grow? Why do we grow? We grow through trials. We go through trials. We grow through trials that we go through and we continue to keep holding on and we continue to keep trusting in God. We grow through these difficulties. It's amazing. This is how I'm going to grow as a pastor. By me not giving up. By me preaching to the few. By me being, this was this my plan? No, I want instant church. I want 10,000 people tomorrow. It's taking so long, God. Come on. Right? Yeah. And God is like, no, Pastor Ryan, I'm growing you. And you're growing along with the people that you're ministering to. We're growing together because God is producing something inside of me that I need. And even though I want a 10,000 member church, it's not going to happen right now. Amen? He's producing something inside of you. He's allowing these tribulations. They're for a purpose and for a reason, even though it's hard. Right? It produces perseverance. And perseverance produces character. And character produces hope. How many guys know that if you didn't know that you were able to make it through a trial and overcome, then you would have no hope? But when you're able to make it through the difficulties of life and you keep walking, when you're able to make it through the struggles that you face and you keep trusting, when you're able to make it through the difficulties of life and hold on, then it produces hope inside of you. Amen? And we need hope. We do. So even through these trials that we face, we have to persevere and know that God is producing something inside of you and it's to give you hope that you and I would have hope in the midst of difficulties. We have hope. Listen to what it says about hope. Now hope does not disappoint. Isn't that good? Have you ever been disappointed? How many guys have ever been disappointed? Every day. No. <laughs> I ordered I ordered this this press on shirt, right? I'm talking all these stories of myself today. I ordered this press on shirt so I could make my own shirts for my band. That's like iron on, something like that, right? So I, I and I paid extra money, ex- expedite it. You know, I'm thinking it's gonna get here two, three days. It's like five days, it's not there, you know. I'm like, where is this place at? It's like you can check, you know. I put it's all in, in Chinese or some type of other language, and then I found it's like somewhere in the middle of Beijing or Hong Kong. I'm like, Where's this thing at? You know? Man. (laughs) And sometimes we just get disappointed. Sometimes life just doesn't happen the way that we want it to. Sometimes we do pray and there's a different outcome. And that's hard to understand as a Christian. Sometimes there's things in our life that happen that we just got to trust God and throw our hands up and say, Lord, you are in control. God, I can't change this situation. I can't change the circumstance. All I can do is pray and ask that you help me through this struggle. All I can do is hold on to you in the midst of these trials and tribulations because I know that there's a hope. And that hope doesn't disappoint me because it's not just a hope like I'm hoping for. Matter of fact, I know that God is still on the throne. That's right. That's right. Sean, when you go on that interview, God is on the throne. When you face those clients, Catherine, God is on the throne. When you go through your difficulties, Andy, God is on the throne. When you go through your trials, Jerry, God is on the throne. When you go through your things, Pastor Jeff, God is on the throne. And that's the hope that we have. The hope doesn't disappoint us. You want to know why? Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who he has given unto us. That's the hope that we have that doesn't disappoint us because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts. And if you never experienced this love, then I want to let you know you can experience this love. It's not just something that's on paper. It's something that's tangible and something real that you can experience in your life. And God's love has been poured out on us. I'm pouring you something, right? God's love is giving me hope in the midst of my trial. God's love 
is giving me hope in the midst of my circumstance. It's his love. His love has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. He has given to us James 1, 2. We're almost done. You guys with me? You guys with me? We're almost done. My brethren, count it all joy. How many guys heard this verse before? When you fall into various trials. How many guys, how many guys count it all joy? Right? Like, oh joy, another trial, you know? Another bill. I wanted this trial, right? Like, what do you mean? I, I, I think we need to change this. right? We can't change it. This is James. He's writing to the church. The church is going through tremendous things, you guys. In the book of James, they were suffering. There was persecution that was going on. There was hardships. And he says, count it all joy when you fall into the various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience or perseverance. So the testing of your faith actually produces something inside of you. You say, well, I don't like these tests. I don't want these tests. I just want the blessings of God, right? But you need these tests. You need some of these things to help you grow. So that's why you can have joy in the midst of your struggles, knowing that the testing in your faith is producing something inside of you that you desperately need. And you know what that is? Patience, perseverance, not being able to give up even when things get hard. But let patience have its perfect work in you, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. You know what that means? That means that you are maturing. God is maturing you. He's helping you grow up. And let's be real. Some of us just need to grow up. We need to grow in our faith in the Lord. We all do. So he's helping us grow up through these trials, through the difficulties that we face. Amen. There's a story. It's an old story. It's a story of a, of a, of a worm or a caterpillar. And this caterpillar is in its cocoon. And this caterpillar is in its cocoon. It's made its cocoon. And it's about to prepare to get wings to finally become a butterfly. And as the caterpillar is struggling and, 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 and having a hard time getting out, he finally pokes his, his little head out and, and he's struggling. And someone sees the caterpillar come by and they decide that they're going to make things easier for the caterpillar. So they just cut the cocoon open. And what happens to the caterpillar? You guys heard the story? The caterpillar doesn't have the strength to be able to fly. The caterpillar just dies because it needed that time and it needed that struggle to get out of that cocoon in order to grow, in order to be that butterfly. And in order for you to get rid of some of this gunk, some of the stuff that is deep rooted inside of your heart, some of this depression, some of this loneliness, some of this self-pity, some of this hopelessness, God is allowing these things in your life because he wants to remove it out of your life. He is working in you. And you can trust in that. Look at God's plan is not my plan. This wasn't my plan. If you know it's not your plan, it's God's plan. Because my plan is always different than God's plan. I had a different plan. I should be in Hawaii right now. <laughs> but God's plan is so much different than my own. But nevertheless, we need to hold on to our faith. And remember that God is producing something through these tests. And through the testing of our faith, it's helping us grow up. It's helping us grow Beloved, and know this, that God loves you, that God cares about you. Sean, God loves you. And even though I know it's been a rough road, God still loves you. Amen. And you say, man. And then some of the trials that we go through is like not just for us, it's for someone else. It's like, that's why I went through this so that I can go and share the goodness of God with somebody else. So that when you see someone struggling, Sean, when you see someone praying, you can say, hey, you know what, brother? I've been there and I made it through the other side. I've been there and I overcame this. I've been there. And then we can relate to people and we can understand what it's like to go through trials and suffer and still hold on to your faith. Amen? Amen. Look at what it says. We're almost done. How many times did I say that? But I, I mean that. 
Oh man, it's 30 minutes. I'm trying to cut it close. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Now, some people believe that, you know, this could be referring to people in heaven. Other people believe that when you read the previous verse in Hebrews chapter 11, that he's talking about the people of the hall of faith. Um, I believe personally that this great cloud of witnesses is just everybody that's around us that sees us as Christians because we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. So first off, it talks about sin as being this weight. You know, I lift weights a little bit. I know Sean lifts weights more. I was actually going to bring a weight. Mm -hmm. But imagine if you're running a race. And if you were running a race and I gave you like a 30 pound dumbbell with both hands and I said, go ahead and run this race. And that's what happens when it becomes deliberate sin in our lives. We run this race, but it makes it harder and makes it more difficult for us to run. And a matter of fact, when it talks about sin, it says the sin easily ensnares us. What does that mean? We're just like. Like, oh yeah, sin, it's like gravity, gravitate to sin, you know? It grabs a hold of us, man, it so easily ensnares us, you know? That's why we need to be careful because once something has us ensnared, it becomes difficult to let go of. He says this, let us run with endurance. That word endurance is the same word to persevere. It means be steadfast, consistent, endurance, persistent in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving. Let us run with endurance. The race that is set before us right let's run with endurance the race that's set before you so you could finish your race i want you to finish your race look at your neighbor tell him finish your race, finish your finish race. look at pastor Ron, tell him finish the sermon <laughs> i'm kidding <laughs> finish the sermon finish your race you say your race is kind of hard. It makes it harder for you. So you need to get rid of some weights. So we all have some weights that we need to get rid of so that we can keep running this race freely. Because these weights become heavy. Because these weights become things that tear us down. They become things that aren't good in our lives as a Christian looking unto Jesus. That's what it says. Do you look into your trial? Is that what it says? Look into your bank account? Is that what it says? Look into your pastor? Is that what it says? Look into your situation, your circumstance, and find no who. Look unto who? Jesus. Jesus. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. You know who started your faith? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. You know who's the finisher of your faith? Jesus. Jesus. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Listen, Jesus had joy in the midst of his tribulation. You want to know why? Because he knew the end result would bring salvation to you and me. And we can have joy too in the midst of our trials as we persevere, knowing that there's a blessing that comes with not giving up. There is a blessing that's going to come to you, Sean, and you keep on doing what you're doing. There's a blessing that comes to you, Andy, by not giving up. There's a blessing that comes with not giving up, with persevering. There's a blessing in my life that will come with me persevering. I believe that there's a blessing in not giving up even when things get hard. Look unto Jesus who the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Do you think it was hard for Jesus to go to the cross? We know it was. He was sweating blood. It was so hard. He was stressed. But you know what? He looked to that end result and he knew for the joy that was set before him. Despising the shame, he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. 